It feels almost routine at this point. Republicans and Democrats in a perennial stalemate about pretty much every aspect of governing, and the semi-regular threat of a government shutdown has become as predictable as it is reckless. But this time, at least I'd argue, it's worse than ever. So while lawmakers are patting themselves on the back for extending funding through December, when we'll likely find ourselves right back here again, this all comes on top of next month's possible catastrophe, defaulting on our debt for the first time ever. And so far, most Republicans are in no hurry to deal with that, the consequences of which Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen laid out today. The full faith and credit of the United States would be impaired and our country would likely face a financial crisis and economic recession. Say goodbye to your 401k. But wait, there is more. There's also the ongoing infrastructure and spending saga, which not even Democrats can agree on. It started as a massive push from the White House to pass a bill on both physical infrastructure, you know, roads and bridges stuff, and what they call human infrastructure, including policies to make childcare and college more affordable, finally addressing the climate crisis, those kinds of relatively important matters. But when they couldn't get Republicans on board, that morphed into two separate bills. The physical stuff, which Republicans support, or at least support Ed, and everything else which Democrats were hoping to pass through a process that would let them bypass the GOP. That is, they could have had enough support in their own party. But some Democrats are taking issue with the cost of the second package, $3.5 trillion. And now others are threatening to pull their support on the first bill until the larger one is passed. You still with me? And since we're not coming to you live right now, a thousand other proverbial backstabbings may have taken place between when we're taping and when you see this. In short, NBC's Chuck Todd from Meet the Press may have put it best when he talked with us about this on Boston Public Radio earlier today. None of us in our own households would allow a situation to escalate like this in our own families, whether it's the, the absurdity of the Republicans refusing to govern on debt ceiling or the fact that you can't get Bernie Sanders, Joe Manchin, and Kirsten Sinema and Pramila Jayapal in the same room to like discuss things. There's sort of two ways to look at our current political divide in this country. There's the political divide between Democrats and Republicans, or there's the political divide between democracy and Trumpism. And you know, if you're looking at the larger, larger picture, which is what's the best way, the fastest way to get Trumpism back into our lives? Total dysfunction of the Democratic Party. Joining me to discuss our former Democratic Congressman Michael Capuano, now a public affairs director at Foley and Lardner LLP, and Washington Post White House reporter, formerly of the Boston Globe, of course, Annie Linsky. Annie and Congressman, it's good to see you both. Thanks for being here. Great to see Great you. Great to be here. Congressman, can Hi. I st start with you? 20 years in Congress. This level of Republican obstructionism and Democratic intraparty dysfunction typical, or is this a high water, or I guess a low water mark? I've been saying it for years, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, it is continuing to get worse. Um, I wouldn't call it a high water mark. I actually call it a low water mark. Um, this is horrendous. And this is the politics of extremism that uh, started in the far right and has now bled into the left. Um, it's just absolutism gone crazy. And it's, as far as I'm concerned, anti-governmental. Uh, anti-community oriented, not because I agree or disagree with one side or the other, but because compromise is an absolutely essential feature of life and politics and government are no exception. Annie, do you share the congressman's analysis? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's absolutely right. I mean, you, you're, you're seeing the kind of um, hardball politics that we saw for years um, on the right um, begin to seep into the Democratic Party. And with this kind of notion of um, a, a massive stalemate right now. I mean, you know, I'm at the Washington Post offices right now, and I was, I don't know if you can see behind me, but I have like a ham sandwich on my desk because we might be going back over to the White House pretty soon. Um, and there's just, you know, this is one of those days that there's so much in flux. But, you know, to the congressman's point, it is not, it does not, not necessary. It, these things don't need to be in as much flux as they are at this moment. Well, Annie, why is it so hard to sell this to Democrats? Virtually every element in this $3.5 trillion package is wildly popular with the American people. Why can't they unite like Mitch McConnell is able to unite, to unite Republicans in the Senate when he needs to, Annie? 
Well, I mean, certainly, you know, governing is harder. Um, you know, McConnell is uh, has had quite a lot of trouble keeping his caucus together. You know, when when um, Republicans were in charge. So, I mean, that is a, a function of being in charge. Um, but look, I mean, the liberal wing of the party feels like they have a tremendous amount of energy. That energy really has not been reflected in key elections, um, at least nationally. But they still, they're, they're, they have their, an activist base with a considerable amount of energy. They feel that time and time again, they have made compromises and they have been left behind. And they don't, you know, they feel like they, they have this instance now where they can just hold on. Um, and get everything, and they want the entire loaf rather than, you know, half of the loaf or three-quarters of the loaf. You know, Mike Capuano, I don't know if you remember Jimmy Kimmel, uh, I don't know, seven mm -hmm. or eight years ago, saying uh, the public doesn't like Obamacare, but they like what's in it. And he went on to say sort of the opposite of a McNugget. And I, I agree with that completely. And the conclusion that I am led to, in addition to what Annie said a minute ago, is the Democrats have done an abysmal job of selling what's in this package. You could stop anybody on the street and almost anybody can say, I think it's 3.5 trillion. But if you ask them what's in it, I'm not sure anybody could identify anything. Well, that's, but that's always the case when you get these big bills. So I, mean, I don't think anybody could have told you what was in the social security package in the 1930s. Um, so that is not surprising to me. To, to me, the problem is not enough people hold their politicians accountable in primaries. I mean, I know everybody wants to vote in the final election of the presidential year, but too few people vote in primaries, leaving both parties too many opportunities to elect extremists as their nominees. Uh, and Donald Trump being the, in my opinion, the epitome of that example. But Democrats have done the same thing. Um, again, compromise has become a swear word. I, I don't understand why, but it has. And I, I laugh when, when someone... And I, Jim, you and I have known each other a long time. We're both liberals, no matter how you define that term. Uh, and I, I laugh when people say there was no uh, expansion. We did Obamacare. That was an incredibly liberal program. You know, we've done a lot of housing things. Can we do more? Of course we can do more. We can always do more. But to say we haven't made progress is is just denying history, just denying facts. So, uh, Mike, Capu again, Mike Capuano, you're, speaking of liberal, you were part of the Progressive Caucus. And one of the key issues today is, does the Progressive Caucus in the House vote against a bill that they support? Because they, they think if they vote against it, uh, that will continue to give them leverage over the holdouts yeah. on the big package. Would you have voted against it? Absolutely not. Why? I, and it, it, why? Because, again, it's the politics of the possible. It's not the politics of everything Mike Capuano wants. If that's the case, I would have voted against Obamacare because I was, I'm was i a Medicare for all guy. Uh, but, you know, progress is progress. So I absolutely would not vote against either one of these bills. Um, and I'd, I'd take whatever I could get and then get right to work the very next day trying to get more. Um, and if, if for people who don't understand that, I don't think they've ever been to a little league meeting, never mind a, a meeting of any elected official. You know, you, you get what you can get and, 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 you know, and, you, and you make progress that way. You know, uh, uh, Annie, let's talk about your uh, usual situation of the day, the White House. Do they believe at the end of the day, whenever that is, that one or two Democrats in the Senate are not willing to sink the central agenda of a Democratic president with a year to the midterms? You know, I, it's funny, I just got at, back from the White House briefing where Jen Psaki was asked that question probably 18 different times, 18 different ways, <laughs> and she just <laughs> gave a, essentially the same answer. I mean, they are remaining optimistic. You know, we have this possibility of a presidential address of some type this evening. We, You know, they, they seem to think that they have an optimistic posture, but that's Joe Biden's personality. And that's the, you know, that's the posture that he often presents, even when things, you know, are going quite badly um, behind the scenes. So I don't know that we can really glean that much from their posture right now. Um, but you look, I mean, this is clearly... They, they they didn't want it to be this kind of nail biting this late, but I, you know the, the thing to remember is these some of these are kind of I think of as false deadlines, and some of them are more real deadlines. I, I you know if if um, there's a vote tonight and this vote fails, yeah. it is entirely possible that this could come back. But you have other things on the horizon like the debt limit, and that's something where um, you, you know that's a much more real deadline that could have significant consequences if they're unable to address it. 
Yeah, uh, Mike Capio, I want to talk to you about the debt, potential debt default, and using the words that Annie Linsky used a minute ago, real versus whatever the other word was you used. Uh, this debt limit thing is just an artificial, uh, there's no, re there's no, they could get rid of this immediately, the Democrats could, yeah. so they wouldn't have to reach these, these economy crushing potential moments. And my mm -hmm. analysis is the only reason the Democrats don't get rid of it because they intend to act just as irresponsibly sometime down, I'm serious, as the Republicans. So otherwise, why wouldn't they get rid of it? Look, I, I, I would, I'm a balanced budget guy. I mean, I don't like a constitutional amendment, but the concept of paying for what you want, for me, is a good concept. And it should be the goal, and it, we have completely lost track of that. I don't think we can get there tomorrow, don't get me wrong, but I do think we should head towards it. I don't have any problem with that. I, I, I want to go back a little bit to the whole concept. When you say that America really wants something, anything, I'm sure that's true. But America is not the is not the answer for every individual district and every individual state. For the sake of discussion, in that three point five trillion dollar bill is a big chunk of the of the Green New Deal. I, I have not taken any polls, but I can feel pretty confident saying the Green New Deal is not popular in West Virginia. I don't know that, but I'm pretty sure I'm probably right. And if that's the case, there's no incentive for Joe Manchin to do it. Plus, politics. But that's like saying, Mike Capuano, that's like saying if you're not in California with the fires, if you're not in the Midwest with the droughts, it, it may if you're be, not in other places with the floods, you don't vote for a bill? Well, guess what? What do all my Republican colleagues do for Hurricane Katrina or Hurricane Sandy? Uh, I, I know what they did, and you know what they did. They voted against it, even though they then got money themselves for Florida and Texas when they had problems. Yeah, it's true. Irresponsibility can, can, is all over the place, and it is not new. Uh, and, and I will tell you that one of the things that's missing in politics today is a reward and benefit behind the scenes. I know no one wants to hear this, but Abe Lincoln did it. FDR did it. JFK did it. Uh, you make deals with people who are not necessarily good people or not don't necessarily have the best interest of the country at, at heart. There are always a handful of them, and they see things differently. Uh, I mean, Joe Manchin is a good man. I don't agree with him on almost anything, but he's, he comes from West Virginia. I come from Boston. I, I'm not sure, but I don't know that you can find two parts of the country that probably see things differently than Boston and West Virginia. I only have a couple of minutes, Annie. Starting with you, uh, is this dysfunction a permanent condition or do you and your uh, idle hours say, well, here's a path out of this? Is there a path out of this or do we just live through it till it expires? And I think the promise of Joe Biden's presidency is that there's a way out of it and that Washington can work. I mean, that's what he ran on. Um, that's sort of the posture he's been taking. It, you know, and I will say to the point about... Um, you know, about the $3.5 trillion um, uh, legislation and what's in it. I mean, there's quite a lot in it for West Virginia. Like, that, it, it's, I mean, you know, the, Joe Biden is trying to make those very kinds of deals that, you, that you know, we just described. It's like, and it's, you know, can it work? I mean, I think we, it won't work 100% for sure, but he has had success. And it's easy to forget that in the opening, you know, first few months of his presidency, he passed a massive... Um, um, of stimulus piece of legislation. And so, it, you know, he will have something to run on and he will be able to say that that he made Congress work a little bit better. Um, but it's, you know, you know, it's hanging in the balance right now, whether or not he can come up with the final bit of that on that problem. I only have a couple of seconds like left Mike Capuano. Speaking of hanging in the balance, Rachel Rollins' uh, nomination to be the U.S. attorney for Massachusetts hanging in the balance, as I mentioned before you came on, tie vote, obviously, in the key committee. Either Democrats have to stick together 100% in the Senate, or if they don't, a Republican or two has got to cross over. Is her nomination at risk, or will she be confirmed? Yes. I, I, I don't know that. I, I think her nomination is at risk. Uh, I think it's an easy vote for any Republican to vote no on a, on a, a U.S. attorney. Uh, it's not a difficult vote. Uh, I, I don't know that any Democrats will walk away from it. I am hoping that they won't, um, and I suspect that they won't. Again, it's a relatively easy vote. Uh, but at the same time, I do think there's going to be some prices to pay for some of the uh, outspoken comments, that uh, not comment, policy positions that Rachel has taken. Uh, that may be fine here, may, you know, not, but they won't necessarily be fine in the rest of the country. I think there'll be some payment to be made. I do think in the end she'll probably get uh, approved, but... Uh, I think it could be a little bit of a bump. It may not matter, but those policies are working. But I don't know if it matters to Tom Cotton well, and the others. 
Any Linsky. Don't let facts get in your way, Jim. Yeah, you I know never that. have, and I never will. <laughs> Mike Capuano, it's great to see you both. Thank you so much for your time. Nice to see you both. Thank you.